Heart rate zero, respiratory rate zero, blood pressure zero, pulse oximetry zero, suit pressure unknown, primary life support unknown. But I think Chris may be dead. Hey folks, and welcome back to After Work Gaming. Tonight we're back in the Turing test, and we're going to go into what I'm assuming is the puzzles. Check one thing just to be sure. Can't go back, we're going to get pushed forward here, so yes, puzzles. Ugh, this room. The fuzzy room. The base has changed. What do you mean? The base was originally constructed as modules, to withstand the seismic activity in and around Thera Macula. It appears the ground team have manipulated these modules. Okay, so Tom is watching us, that's nice. Okay, there's a box. But, well... So these are going to be the first few puzzles. They're just going to teach us mechanics, I guess. Uh, and, you know, I think we could be tempted to go through them very, very quickly. But I don't want to just, like, rush through them. The base was built initially by machines. I served as the mind of these operations. I arrived first on Europa in 2240. It costs a lot to send humans into space with the necessary life support, especially such a vast distance from Earth. So, robotics built this place. Huh. Okay. Uh, yeah, as I was saying, I don't want to just rush through these because I want to hear what, for example, Tom has to say. Because I'm, I'm, I'm as curious about the story in this game as I am about, you know, like the actual puzzles. Okay, so it looks like we can transfer these orbs with uh, the gun we have. That's really the right term for what we have. The tool we have. There we go. I wonder why the ground team has changed these rooms. I have a hypothesis. These rooms are Turing tests. Turing tests? Turing tests are tests designed to tell humans and machines apart. Typically, problems only solvable by a human. A combination of logical and lateral thinking. So, you can't complete these tests, Tom? No. That is why I am glad you are here to help. We need to work together. Interesting. Foreshadowing, maybe? In the sense that we're not going to work together uh, at some point. So here it is. We can't go up the ladder with the box. So let's just go up here and see what we can find. Nothing. A lot of nothing. Staircase down. Is there something down? No. 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 Oh, interesting. These kind of look like they're open windows. So let's go and see if we can drop the box through these. I don't even know what you would call this. The power box, I guess? <laughs> well, it dropped through, not, notwithstanding my just complete bumbling when it comes to just purely getting close enough. All right, let's not even use the stairs now. Let's pick it up. And open the door. There we go. They really have completely repurposed these rooms. I am quite impressed. So, what were they used for before? Most of them were used for storage. But they have converted them beyond recognition. Perhaps they ran out of things to do out here. The devil makes work for idle hands. Huh. Interesting. So they made... They set up a series of Turing tests. Um... I don't know why. Okay. I mean, I'm assuming they want to keep machines out, but that doesn't explain why Tom is everywhere. I mean, he's in the ceiling of every single one of these rooms so far. But, okay, we'll see. Uh, so there's nowhere to transfer the orb, but there is this switch, so... There we go, switch mechanic. Um, right. Moving on. See, he's like, he's there. So, okay, fine. What other machines or non-humans would you want to keep out? Okay. Ah, no, nothing to say. All right, so they, he used to say, Tom said that these were used for storage, and I, I mean, there it is, right? Let's see. This opens this door. We need to go here to open this door. And open window again. So can I? Yes, I can. All right, so I can I can grab an orb from a distance, and I'm assuming shoot it from a distance. Okay, perfect. Ugh, it's a fact. 
Uh, do you know the ground team's location? The crew are deeper inside the base, it seems. <sighs> they must be trying to survive. Can you find their precise location? I'm afraid not. I am working to regain control. Though I once had complete control of this base, a lot has changed in the past 500 hours. Oh, there... <sighs> I was about to say. <laughs> Looks like Tom isn't everywhere, and yet there he is. Okay, so... We use the box to open the door down there, but we need to power this door. And there's only one orb. Which powers this door. I got an idea. Hold on. Uh, can, do we have to shoot it up there? Can we just use... Yes, we can. Alright, so let's just drop this here. Open this door, right? And then we'll power up this door so that we can go here. Up the stairs. And now since we can do this from a distance, let's grab and repower this door. Okay. The master class engineer, Tom. So, if this base is managed by you, why can't you find the crew? The base's communication array is malfunctioning. Uh-huh. Likely story, Tom. I do- I mean, it's a legitimate question, and we just asked it, right? If he's everywhere, how come he doesn't know? Well, this game knows better than to put restricted area and expect me not to go here. Perhaps we can't solve this yet. Uh... Okay, so it's a 5x5 five five of these energy boxes. I'm assuming at some point we're going to find a clue that tells us where in this 5x5 five five grid we have to put the orbs. Okay. Alright, so there's not Tom freaking me out. Nothing we can do for now. Emergency security supply. Okay. Um... What is this thing? Can I go in here? Whoa. Whoa. This is... You guys are seeing this, right? Like, it's completely messing with my vision when I'm in here. What does it do? It's a magnet. Hmm. Okay. Oh, we need, but we need two of these, and I can only find the one box. Let's see what else we can find. Hold on. Boom. Uh, not another one here. There's nothing under the stairs. Nothing under the stairs. So, I mean, is it really that, like, that non-subtle? Oh. Aha, uh -huh, green orb. Uh, green orb intermittent. Green orb goes... Okay, so green orb basically pulses energy on and off. Which means... Right, there we go. Uh, but is it... I mean, is it really that obvious? Like, that on the nose that I'm... That this Ava's... doesn't add up. What does not add up? If there was an accident, surely they'd come to find me, not try to lock me out. My instance is still resolving conflicts. I expect they have their reasons. Okay. I was gonna say, I mean, is it on that, is it seriously that on the nose that, uh, I'm affected by all the things that, you know, machines would normally be affected by? Just, just throwing it out there, you know? Is it really that, that obvious? But, okay, maybe. Alright, so here we go. We need a door, we have a door that needs to be powered by two items. We have a switch here, which has an uh, uh, energy box and an energy ball that we can insert. And we need one to power. Okay. My guess would be that we can probably go through this grate and pull a ball. So, we know that this goes here, right? Okay, now that's powered. Ah, perfect. Let's grab the box. Let's say this. This is it. So power one is there, and then we can flip this switch for power two. Now this door should be opened. Perfect. And, yes, through the grate. And we have now powered up the door. Let's go. My instance has just been updated. Uh-huh. Uh, sorry? I have two instances of my mind. Two separate versions. 
a slave mine running on the satellite, and a master running here on the surface. When the communication was cut between the surface base and the satellite, the two instances of my mind were separated. So, during all this time, all of my knowledge divided into two separate branches. I continued to learn on the satellite and I continued to learn on the surface. I am trying to merge the knowledge to create a timeline of what's happened here. But there are incongruities between these memories. Conflicts. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's kind of interesting, actually, is, is what happens when you divide your consciousness and then put it back together with different... Sorry, I never noticed the, the cursor. There are, there is three arrows. Maybe I can suck, like, three of these orbs into the tool at, at once? Okay. So, here's my thought. While Tom was talking, I was kind of looking over the, the setup. We need this power orb out of this room, so now we can take it out of the room. There we go. We need to power up this door, because we need to get this other orb here. So let's... And now this is the box that's controlling the power to the door, so we can... We can take the orb, perfect. Right? And now we need two. We need to take one, take two. And the door is open, perfect. By the way, the thing about Tom having instances of himself and being put back together... Uh, if you guys have ever read anything by Anne Leckie, the Imperial Rats trilogy, like Ancillary Sword, Ancillary Justice, and Ancillary Mercy. Uh, I think Ancillary Justice is the first book. It it touches on that theme of what happens when you're uh, an omnisentient AI, and you have pieces that get cut off from you, and then you get basically put back together. And, you know, how would you cope, or what would you think, or what would pieces of you think? It's kind of interesting. It's a... Uh, there are many things about that book that are very interesting, or the, that, that series that are very interesting. Uh, if you're interested in sort of space opera, non, not particularly hard sci-fi, I recommend the books. They're a lot of fun. Uh, and like I said, the AI concept is, is used to great effect because it gives you sort of like this omnisentient first-person narrator, which I hadn't seen before in, in books. I'm like... Here's the thing. I'm a little concerned that these observation decks exist in these rooms. Because the rooms, in theory, are designed to keep people from getting somewhere, right? It's Turing tests. It's just like a, a, a filter, natural filter for humans rather than machines or anything else, I guess. But why the observation decks? Like, portal I got. Oh, gun's gone? That gun's back. Planetarium. Mm -hmm. This is the command center. You can check on the crew status from here. Wow. All right. Ashiyama, Ashiyama Industries. Mm. Okay, so I'm seeing a whole lot of stuff that I'm assuming we can read because, you know, this place is pretty good about letting you read monitors uh, and everything else. So I think we're probably going to look through here and that's going to be the end of the episode for us. So... Let's at least start with this thing, because obviously, right? Jupiter. Jupiter is the second largest physical body in our solar system. It has a large gravitational impact which stretches and squashes Europa. This creates geothermal energy inside Europa, a source of great heat. This has caused a subsurface ocean. Okay. That's Europa. Europa. Europa's surface is constantly facing Jupiter as it rotates because it is tidally locked to it. Though it has now been discovered that the rocky interior rotates separately underneath the ice and water layers. Cool. Ah, and that's probably the station. The Fortuna. The Fortuna is in low orbit around Europa. It houses a crew of 12. It serves as a communication and transport link between Earth and Europa's surface base. Yeah, so we only saw, I think, like six. So now it's 12. Okay. Um. There's the other six, so that explains why, for example, we didn't see Dan McLean in one of the rooms. Probably on the other, in the other six or something. Uh, microscope. Okay. I'm assuming these are broken. And yes. Lost signal. Okay. That pattern was just painful to look at even for a second. Uh, orbits of Europa. I think that says hypothetical major planet cycle times. Okay. Uh, we're not going to touch that yet. Tough books. Oh, this is this is the same thing we just saw on the other table. Okay. 
It's on Jupiter. It's on Jupiter, okay. What's this? A shipping manifest. Um, okay, shipping manifest in 01-A, and we're just going to go around from there. Space station... This is a destination. Space station canceled. Crew quarters canceled. Engineering canceled. Mining canceled. Medical canceled. Crew quarters canceled. Labs canceled. Arrived for control, maintenance, and control. Labs, medical, engineering, crew quarters, cargo all canceled. Labs all canceled. Cargo all canceled. Medical, engineering, crew quarters, cargo all canceled. So all that ever came, or according to these, all that ever came was control and maintenance. Okay. What's this? It's like the arrival log. Um... Crew arrived January 1st, 2244, so that's five years ago, because I think this is 2250. Uh, first time attempt, cancelled. That was December 2nd. Now, January 1st, that's when they arrived. Supply, supply, supplies. Aborted in 2246. Crashed in 2248. Modular supplies. And there it is. May 13, 2250. Europa single crew, Ava, 01. And the previous entry is April 14th, which tells me that whoever was listed as having woken up the day before us didn't get down here. Okay. Remember that the, there was that room with like a user error or something? And he said, and it said that the... I think it was a guy. The silhouette vaguely was like a dude. That the, the, the guy woke up the day before we did. So. Uh, although Tom never mentioned, oddly enough. And everything else after that is after that, so it's all cancelled because there's some sort of, like, horrifying problem going on. Okay. Let's listen to these. Tom, start recording. I am always recording, Daniel. The day is January the 6th. My watch says it's 2.30 on Earth. Here we are, members of the human race, standing on Jupiter's moon Europa. I am Captain Daniel McLean. I'm joined here by the rest of my team. It is our intention to make this moon our home and investigate life on this planet. Man's curiosity and appetite for discovery will continue to change our world for the better. Inspiring. And might I add my congratulations to you all. Okay, so Dan McLean made it down here. Okay. Uh, I don't know if the, 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 the key number up there tells me the date, but okay, January 6th of some year. Here it is. Beautiful, isn't it? What makes this one more remarkable than the others? The way it attaches itself to other organisms. Its behavior is very abnormal. It seems to form a symbiotic relationship with most life forms. How do you mean? Do you want me to dumb it down? I know what it means. What does it do? It attaches itself to almost anything living, but it's not parasitic. It's quite alien. We're trying to figure out what effect it has on life forms. Okay. Um, let me do one thing, because it, it may be a little hard for you guys to hear what's happening, because that was kind of a, a, a quiet recording, and the music's really kind of going. So let me... Yeah, let me turn down the, the music. I'll be back in, like, two seconds. One second. All right, so I'm back. So uh, let's just pick up. Essentially, he was... Uh, the, the second log is about them finding some sort of parasitic something that attaches itself to other organisms. The, the the line of the day from that though is, oh yeah, it's not a parasite. It's 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 quite alien. We're trying to figure out what it does to to, to other life forms. Yeah, that never ends poorly. Mikhail, you seem distant. Do I? Yes. What's wrong? What's wrong, Mikhail? Mikhail, what's wrong? Are you listening, Mikhail? Are you able to hear? Okay. Whoever this... There was a Mikhail up on the station, but again, Mikhail wasn't scheduled to wake up for another 200 years. But whoever this Mikhail is... Distant. Okay. And also apparently not responding to Tom. I was talking to the ISA. They don't know what to do with this. The magnitude of the discovery. We should send samples back to Earth. I think we need to get this to a better lab. Me and Sochi are having trouble making enough clones. We're going to run out of the necessary resources to continue studying Organism 119. They're calling for a grounding of all Europa transports until they get your report. 
seriously. Yeah. That's rather drastic. Hmm. So they found this thing. So they come down to Europa, right? Great celebration. Then they find something that's a parasite or whatever, and they're trying to figure out how it works. Mikhail gets all, I'm not talking to you, right? And then here they're talking to the ISA, and the ISA says, well, we don't know what's going on, but we're not letting anything off Europa until we figure it out. Okay, well, that that's a recipe for disaster if I've ever heard it. Let's see what's on the second floor. And he, Tom told us when we woke up, right, that they found some sort of organism that uh, they wanted, they, they, they potentially thought was dangerous, the ISA did. Okay, so here we go. Europa loading bay, status compromised, transfer material unknown, crew transfers unknown, signal interrupted. Europa's ground base was built using the thousands of tons of resources shipped to Europa through an interplanetary network. Okay. Europa base modules. Crew, four. Status damage, repairs disabled. Pressure, oxygen. Well, at least the gas, misc, uh, gas mix is right. 21% oxygen. And 78 nitrogen. And, you know, everything else is, is strange. Off gases. Here we go. Europa's base is built beneath Europa's surface, buried in theramacular ice. Its modular nature allows it to be reconstructed according to the mission's needs at any time. Drilling platform, status operational, extracting materials, uh, looks like 112,000 kilograms. 112, uh, yeah. Uh, Europa's drilling platform is the largest outside of Earth. At 40 meters high, it is one of the tallest machines on any moon. The drill has bored to a depth of over 4 kilometers and recovered over a million kilograms of material from deep underneath the surface. This level of extraction is made possible by utilizing the Ashiyama electric fusion reactor. No, it hasn't. It says extract the material is like one-tenth of that. Okay. I think the more important thing to focus on right now is that there's an operational fusion reactor around here, which... I'll tell you, it does not, does not fill me with confidence. Alright, and now we've looped. Hmm. You know, the, the based on the recordings we heard down there, and the whole Turing test thing, maybe the parasite makes you, like, less cognitively human, so... You actually have to go and, like, they're trying to keep, like, the infected people out or something? I don't know. Conjecture, people. Here we go. So, like, a little rugged radio. Digital audio broadcasting. Fine. Um, can't flip it. I just, like, I can rotate them. Okay. Posted notes. I'm not looking at any of the monitors deliberately. Clipboard. Looks like a specimen tag or something. Random papers. Another mug. The reason I'm 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 rotating them at the bottom is the same reason that I rotate stuff in uh, uh, abduction, because I <laughs> I don't put anything past anybody these days. So this is the manual power the power box. Okay, so we'll just keep calling it the power box. What's this? Ah, headset and a radio, which we can't interact with. Okay. All right, let's get to the monitors then. Reactor. Okay, load. Fine. Uh, temperature. Okay. Environment. Actually, okay, mix. Medicine. So this is, I guess, what we have down here. Okay. Um, consumables. Frozen meals with vegetarian option. Tortillas, packs of noodles, vacuum sealed snacks. Potatoes, lettuce, and ice cream sandwiches. <laughs> ice cream sandwiches are important. Okay. This is just a better view of... It looks like the drill module is, is slightly less pressure, but I don't know what the measure there is. Uh, medicine, consumables. Comment. We need more ice cream. A certain someone ate all the strawberry ones. Chris. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to look at that yet. Let me just see, is there anything else? No. I guess I am going to look at it now. Okay, let's start with... Let's start with ourselves. Ava Turing, personnel bio, birthplace, Regensburg, Germany, nationality American, date of birth, 2211, April 26th, role engineer, current objective, investigate communications crisis, outstanding tasks, 
Contact I say contact ground team and review Fortuna's diagnostics. Okay. Ava Turing, losing her parents at a young age, Ava Turing was sent to military engineering school. Shortly after graduating, she enlisted in the U.S. Navy and trained as a pilot. Due to her exemplary service record and willingness to leave Earth for extended periods of time, Turing was recruited by the ISA. On the exploratory mission to Jupiter's Europa, Turing's role aboard the Fortuna is engineer and vehicle officer. So, good signal. I'm in the control room. Match. Uh, last known location. Control room. Yes. Body temperature 37.4. I wonder if that means I'm running a short fever. I think 37 is the right temperature, but I may be wrong. Heart rate 64. Pretty, pretty relaxed there. Respiratory rate 15 breaths per minute. Blood pressure, oxygen saturation. Suit pressure is unknown. Okay. Hmm. Daniel McLean, there's the captain. Um, let's uh, let's check him out. Captain Daniel McLean, who I'm assuming may be related to Chris McLean, sort of look the same, I guess. Uh, birthplace: Lunenburg, Canada. Nationality: Canadian. Date of birth: 2204, September 9th. Role: Captain. Current objective: Classified. Outstanding task: Classified. Interesting. Um. Um. Um, um, um. Okay. M uh, here's the thing. I sort of... Kind of weird. It's, it's moving as I rotate. I, I don't know if that's just a quirk of the... Of the... If that's just a quirk of the engine. But that's kind of weird. I'm almost curious whether there's a pattern back there, but I'm I am not skilled enough to detect anything like this here. And that's it. That's the monitor gone. Okay, what about Chris McLean? Also from Lunenburg, Canada. So, right, we knew that because he had a Canadian flag. That user unknown thing also had a Canadian flag. And there's something real shady going on about Dan McLean. So, for now, I'm going to go with that was Dan McLean's room. Okay, so, he's born in Canada, he's Canadian, date of birth 2204, September 9th, he's an engineer. Current objective, terminated. Outstanding task, terminated. Chris McLean. Chris McLean is an identical triplet. His father is an electrician and his mother is a mechanical engineer. Following in his mother's footsteps, Chris trained as an engineer. The McLean triplets became famous as Chris and Dan took to space, leaving their brother Peter behind. Although an accomplished engineer, his place on this mission was also partly due to the ISA being interested in the long-term effects of space travel. Test results will be compared to those of Peter McLean. Interesting. Um, signal zero location exterior last known location crew quarters body temperature is minus 160 see this is what I'm saying 100 Kelvin um, hmm. heart rate zero respiratory rate zero blood pressure zero pulse oximetry zero suit pressure unknown primary life support unknown I think Chris may be dead and I'm assuming he's outside frozen. Maybe something happens in the crew quarters. Maybe he was like asleep or something and then, I don't know, there was like a decompression and, and all of a sudden the crew quarters just like popped. Okay, so that takes care of that. Let's see what else we have. Soichi Yui, birthplace, Tokyo. These are the people who were in the, in the thing. How is, how is he dead? He is asleep. He has to wake up in 200 years. You all have to wake up in 200 years. Dr. Soichi Yui, birthplace, Tokyo, Japan, nationality, Japan, Japanese, DOB. Okay, role, exobiologist. This was the person who was explaining about the parasite the first time in the recordings downstairs. Here it is. Current objective, synthesize DNA duplicates of sample 937. You know what? Just for kicks, and because I do have paper right next to me, let's write down the number 937. I don't know if it's going to be necessary. I don't know if this place functions like, uh, like abduction, but just in case. So, outstanding tasks. Investigate sample 937, classify all life recovered, sequence six samples, 1387 through 1500. Dr. Suichi Yui had no childhood interest in space travel. Instead, he spent his youth studying the life in Lake Biwa near his hometown. Yui went on to study marine biology and chemistry at Kyoto University. After the tragic death of his wife, Rin, he disappeared into his work, re-emerging 11 years later as a preeminent exobiologist. Hmm. 
Signal zero, location unknown, last known location, crew quarters, body temperature unknown, 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 unknown. He may also be dead. And also in the crew quarters, like Chris. Okay. But maybe, really, maybe something did happen in the crew quarters. Check out Mikhail. In Klushinka, Russia. Russian doctor. Current objective terminated. Outstanding task. Keep calm. <laughs> Mikhail Tokarev. Mikhail Tokarev's father died of cancer at a young age. This motivated him to become a doctor in hopes of helping others. Tokarev worked as a medical doctor in Russia for three years before working for the UN as a doctor in crisis. His role on the Europa mission is chief medical officer. Also no signal. Also from the crew quarters. Everything else unknown. Are these guys alive? What the? Maybe they just can't track them because there's like a signal problem. Maybe they're alive, but just... Okay. Let's see. Sarah Brook. The last one. Damascus, Syria. Joint British and Syrian. She's an exobiologist also. Classify organism. Okay. Classify life. All life recovered. Sequence samples 1043 to 1387. And he's 1387 to 1500. Not for nothing, guys, but you're both working on 1387? Just saying. Anyway. Sarah Brooke. Sarah Brooke's parents are both scientists. In her teenage years, she was sent to an English public boarding school. Brooke is one of the most eminent uh, exobiologists of the 23rd century. For her formative work on the Mars Discovery Project, she was specifically requested to be part of the Europa Ground Team. Though only 28 years old, Sarah has touched the surface of two planetoids and spent more time on alien soil than any other member of mankind except the Mars team. Okay. Another one. All from the crew quarters. All unknown. This one is pretty clear that he's dead. This one, we don't know. Basically, let's say he's a recluse. And these three, we don't know. Okay. All right, well, if we thought this was going to give us some answers, this just raises more questions. Yeah, that's that's probably the transition to the next section. So I think we're going to call it there for now. Uh, it was a pretty long episode, but I, I'm kind of interested in the lore that we just picked up, right? So if you guys like this episode, like, comment, subscribe. Let's me know that uh, you want to see more of this and that, you know, I'm doing something right. If you think I overlooked something, if you'd like me to play this differently, if you'd like me to just move on, or if you have, you know, other uh, constructive criticism, you know, leave a comment. Everything's welcome. And uh, in any case, I will see you all next time.